so it's um, a sunny day and someone's made their lawn. <sighs> Anywho, um, when we were captured by the King of the Giants, I think we all realised that um, Troika really wasn't going to work. Um, so many ways. I'm so, so disappointed in Troika. Um, the idea of trying to run it with that initiative system, in fact any kind of initiative system with fighting fantasy, how is that going to work? So um, we're going to convert to Cairn. Now this has been sitting in my cupboard since November, so I'm just going to roll their stats, strength, dex and will, uh, and I will I'll shift them around to make Willow Tweed the clever one, Sustavios the, the uh, strong one. So, 9, 10, 11, 11, another 11, 9, 11, 9, oh gosh, he's useless, 11, 11, 9, and 7. Yep, he sucks. So, with a tweed, just look her stats. Nine. Nine. And thirteen. So, thirteen. She's quite average. Now we're going to look up their hit protection. Not hit points, but hit protection. Because this is based on um, into the odd. So we need to roll the d6. Okay. Three and five. So I guess he's the he's a tough knight. He'll have the five. She'll have the three. Um, Ken also has lots of interesting charts on. Um, character creation for names, backgrounds, appearance, starting gear, and um, vice, reputation, misfortunes, virtue. Pretty cool, pretty interesting. Very slim book. Um, back of the book, it might give you the impression that there's a setting in here that isn't. It's designed to enable the into the odd type rules and the knave rules to work with the more traditional uh, fantasy setting. Not many monsters in here. In fact, there's about six, I think. But if you go to the KenRPG.com website, you can download a booklet um, with lots of a PDF, obviously, with lots of uh, monsters in it. So when well, we need a monster, I'll roll a, um, on a chart in here and uh, I shall grab the conversion from the uh, Ken PDF I downloaded. So we are currently in the prison in the castle of the giants and we're going to need to escape. So can we work away uh, through the bars um, on the first night we're there with our mighty strength of 11 for Sustavios. So um, we've not, I guess we've not got our gear at the moment, but um, he's going to use whatever improvised stuff he can find to try and work a bar loose to escape. So we're rolling our strength or less. That's 11. Yeah, you hate me, don't you, you swine? Um, so we can't do that. We must think of something else. Um, Willow Tweed, use your brain power. We're going to have to call for one of the guards and um, yes, we shall fake something. Um, somebody will pretend to be ill. Yes, that will do. Um, Willow Tweed will pretend to be ill. She will use her... Hmm. I hope willpower is really the catch-all. Um, will we be able to find out? Does it explain what will is um, clearly willpower used for saves to persuade, deceive? Yes, that's, that's what we want. So we're rolling our will. 
and you hate me as well. But I've got a better plan. Um, Willow Tweed's uh, spell, which was Illusion, is now a visual illusion in Can. And she can create a room sized silent illusion. So, what we need is for the guards, when they come in for their usual thing, they need to see an empty cell. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to um, do we need I think we need to take a fatigue for that and put it in our uh, inventory. So uh, oh we haven't got a spell book have we? Have we got our spell book? Let's roll my plus and minus dice. More pluses we've got our spell book. We've managed to secrete it in our robes. Oh, we've got our spell book, all right. So uh, she can cast that spell and she will take a fatigue in her inventory. So I've cut the inventory down to 10, which is the right number for Ken. And we fill up one with fatigue, even though a lot of our other stuff uh, isn't there. So uh, the guards come in, they open the door to see um, the empty cell and we sneak out because Sir Stadia, Stavios hasn't got his armour on at the moment and we rush around and try to find our gear. Um, I'm guessing we can, it's going to be nearby isn't it? So um, we'll find a room with our stuff, we gather all our stuff again and we head, try and find our way out of this mess. So I'm using Inked Adventures Map and Dice playing cards and we're starting off in the prison cells. Now I think we will probably, we've been in here, we've grabbed our gear from probably this bit here so we've I think we're trying to sneak off this way as the guards maybe have searched our room called for some mates to help we are sneaking off south so I've shuffled these and the spades are over there where the, the entrances and exits are on those and uh, things like that so we're just Let's just start our journey. That doesn't make sense. Let's go for another one. It's not going to be it. Is there It just seems silly. Right, living quarters. That sounds a lot more sensible. So we've gone off into this passageway. Uh, we're going to roll for wandering monsters in this section. And we do not get any. I'm looking for a one. So let's dash to the right here, a fountain, well we'll use this respite, just to quickly check if there's anything there, no, um, we'll use this respite to sort out our gear and make sure we've got our armour on and our weapons at the ready because uh, we're going to have to escape because um, we can't f fight these giants. We could um, any giants that um, we deal with, um, but I think there's going to be other mon creatures um, employed to guard these places, so I think we're going to head south. Whoa, disturbed barrows. I think there's definitely going to be something here. Now, is it? A monster of some kind. Yes. And we're going to check uh, an encounter chart in here. We'll go for level one because I don't know what I'm doing. And we are looking at a goblin. Okay. Maybe let's quickly have a look. No, we don't have a, a mount that shows up, do you? Right. 
goblin. Okay. Let's say two goblins and um, see how we do. And we grab the stats from this PDF, which you can't see very well. Um, hit protection 4, strength 8, dex 12, will 8, dagger or shortbow d6 damage. Small grotesque humanoids with skin in earthy tones of green, brown and grey. They avoid combat, only attacking when in advantage using hit and run tactics. Sometimes are found using dire wolves as mounts. But these, um, because I want to try out the combat, um, these goblins are guarding this bit of the dungeon. So they have a, a duty to stop these people or at least um, shoot them and then run away and call for help. So that's probably what they're going to do. Now, we're going to make a deck save to try and react before they do. Um, it's just, they both have decks of nine, so yes, we do. Um, one of us does. Um, so Stavios, let's say, I was thinking of him first, he's on the left. So he can react first. He's not got a missile weapon as such. But um, in this short distance, he can run at one of them and uh, make an attack. Now they're not wearing any armor. So he rolls his d4 at goblin number one and does eight damage with his attack. So that goblin immediately goes down. Um, then the other goblin will go because um, Thingy failed, Willow Tweed failed her um, deck save. So she's not as fast as they are. So perhaps this goblin will probably shoot and run away. So um, his short bow is d6. His mate just went down, so he will just fire off a shot at Sir Stavios, minus Sir Stavios's armor of three. And it bounces off the armor. Because you don't roll to hit, you just roll for damage. And um, you subtract the armor, and the rest is subtracted from your hit protection. So he's going to run for it now, but um, it is now uh, Willow Tweed's go. Again, she doesn't have any missile weapons. But for fun, she's going to cast her visual illusion spell again to make the door disappear. And there's just a solid wall. So, uh, yeah. She will take another fatigue, and that completely fills up her inventory. So she can't carry anything else. I may give the goblin a saving throw because the wall has suddenly disappeared, the door has suddenly disappeared. So his will is eight. He is fooled by that. So now he turns around absolutely terrified, and I think we might be able to. Um, bargain with him for his life. So Sir Stavios will say, we will let you live if you show us the way out of here. And Sir Stavios is going to make a, oh his will is seven, but I'll give him a plus two bonus because um, the goblin's quite scared. So let's see, let's say nine or less and he would have managed on a seven anyway. So the goblin is going to help us escape. And Willow Tweed will remove the illusion. So I think the goblin is going to take us down some kind of secret tunnel for the quickest way out. Because um, that's kind of what we're looking for. Right, I need these, let's see. Okay. Well, I think it would make sense to have it like this because you know, the tunnels are on the bottom. So, um, do we encounter anything going through here? As this is a rather wild and woolly part of the uh, dungeon. No, through, just through a passage. We will head. I think we'll 
keep going. Oh, right, we're getting built up again. I think. Um, more passages down here. We'll probably head south. Ah. Um, statue, shrines, and font. I wonder. There may well, there probably will be an encounter here. So I will go to the dungeon chart again uh, for level one. Now it's D12, so while I'm looking for that, we're looking for a six on that chart. And it is an orc. So it's um, probably the goblin superior. This is going to call for some diplomacy or panic. His description says, ugly humanoids with greyish skin, protuberant fangs and powerful build, animalistic and warmongering, hate other humanoids and delight in violence, can be convinced to join armies under the promise of pillage, lair underground, sometimes along with ogres and trolls. I'm wondering if this goblin is going to panic when he sees his probable boss. Um, I think Sir Stavios or Willow Tweed is going to try and convince the goblin to not say anything to uh, cause trouble. So Willow Tweed, I think, will try to do that because her will is better, basically. So she needs a 13 or less. Yeah, I thought he might panic. So he goes, boss, look out. These two are trying to escape. Ah! Kind of thing. So um, it's all going to kick off. And we are going to have to roll our decks. Or last to go first. Failure and a failure. So the bad guys go first. This is not good. The orc is probably going to attack first with his axe. Um, he may very well, well, one, two, three, four, five, six. He's going for Stavios. He rolls his, oh, eight minus uh, three. That's five. Um, we are down to zero hit protection for Stavios. And when your character's um, health hit protection, whatever, it is reduced to exactly zero, there's a chance you could get a scar. Uh, see the scars table on the following page for more. So we look at the scars table. When an attack reduces a PC's HP to exactly zero, they are uniquely impacted. Look up the result on the table below based on the total damage taken. So five points got past Stavios's armour. So we look at five and we are diseased, which makes no sense. You're afflicted with a gross, uncomfortable infection. When you get over it, roll 2d6. If the total is higher than your max hit protection, take the new result. Okay, so you can, you can end up with more hit protection than you started with. Um, he's been infected by the uh, mucky, what is it, axe? The axe uh, wound has caused an infection. So, um, but anyway, but we're still standing because that is just hit protection and not health points. So that's his go. Um, the goblin will probably come and attack, uh, bolstered by the bravery of his um, boss. He will attack Willow Tweed with his um, dagger this time, rolling like that. Uh, one hit protection damage. Now we have our go. Um, so Stavios will attack the orc. He has one point of armor. That is four. He is thwacked by Sir Stavios and his mighty sword. Um, Willow Tweed with her um, small sword will take a stab at the goblin, causing three damage. And that goblin is down to one hit protection. 
Um, but I'm guessing he's going to panic again and just basically uh, run away. Um, and it is his ghost, so he's probably going to manage that and he's, he's going to basically route and uh, go and hide in a corner somewhere, which leaves us to try and make our way out. So I'm going to take something from the spades deck. Oh boy, that is a dead end, but there's stuff there, storage and unfinished quarters. So um, actually it's going to be like that, isn't it? Ah, yeah, it will be there. So this direction, not so good. I'll roll for a wandering monster here just in case because it's not really a substantial room. Um, can we find anything interesting? I'm gonna... Willow Tweed is going to have a look. Um, is there something interesting? No. So she won't even bother looking. Um, we'll head south. Take another spades card. Grim Gate. So I'm going to check for wandering monsters as we are going to rest up and recover our hit protection. So we are back up to full. And it's time to see what's here. Now I'm assuming some kind of guard monster will wait outside the Grim Gate as we try to escape. Um, honestly, right now we're not bothered about trying to get the moon back, the um, presumably mechanical moon um, from a cave which was stolen. We just want to get out alive and we're going to roll on the level two um, monster chart because I think it's going to be a big old sort of more substantial creature that's um, guarding the main entrance or our escape. Uh, cleric level two. Um, now I'll roll again. I want, I want a monster. Ten. Fighter level two. This is Okay, look, let's roll a d8 and we've got more chance of getting something sensible. Six is a giant spider. Okay. So as we look out of this uh, dark gate, this grim gate, we see a six foot long uh, giant spider and it is poisonous and we need to be very careful. So um, right. Hmm. What can we do? We can well Willow Tweed's got some oil. Um, we can light a flaming path around this creature. Um, hmm. Let's try and keep it away from us because it's not going to like that, is it? Um, it says the it says the giant black widow um, Black spiders with the red hourglass pattern on their abdomen dwell in web-filled layers and sometimes prey on humans. So there's all webs around the edges here and sometimes prey on humans. So we will uh, light. Oh, we've got torches, haven't we? Yeah, we're going to throw some. She's going to throw a bit of the oil on the webs and set fire to it. And uh, I can't imagine the spider liking that. Um, it'll probably want to keep away as we um, create a, a sort of area of fiery stuff. 
So we're going to keep the other side of the fire and the other side of the spider and um, just make our way out um, away from this uh, the castle of the giant king. But as I guess we're trying to intimidate the spider by doing this, we will need to do a will check to see if that works or if it thinks these guys aren't that hard. And we succeed. We get less than 13 or equal or less. So we managed to frighten the creature enough with our fiery business for it to let us go. Now I was initially a bit disappointed with Ken because um, it seemed to suggest there was a setting in here but there's not. But this is a neat little game. Um, you can get it for free on PDF from Ken rpg.com and uh, if you are interested then I you know I recommend you have a look at that because um, it's kind of neat um, using the into the, into the odd type rules and um, these uh, character creation tables are quite fun even though I didn't use them today I was just converting our uh, troika characters but um, yeah these charts here rules here, 100 spells with short descriptions, very cool looking um, character sheet and a rule summary at the end and that's basically it. And you can get um, an additional one and monsters, a little bestiary which you can download from the website as well in the resources section. And I, I was really disappointed that Troika didn't turn out to be the game I wanted it to be. You know, when you, you're thinking about running a game and then you think I'm going to have to ditch the initiative system because it's a mess. Um, I don't like it at all. Um, the fact that a character could go through a whole round or more and not have an action, not have initiative. Um, and you know, some poisons and things or if you're injured you might die by the end of the round and then the next initiative card that is drawn is the end of round card and your character is dead. But hey, just roll up a new character because um, none of this matters anyway. And it's a shame that it doesn't matter. Um, it needs to matter a bit. So I think um, I just felt really, really quite sad that Troika didn't turn out to be what I wanted it to be. But. I'm quite liking Ken.